Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Well, hey guys, I, I just wanted to hop on here very quickly. First of all, I need to say a very big thank you to many of you. And of course, I, I can't name everybody because so many of you were very kind. But I'd love, and I yesterday I did say this, and I'll say it again, please forgive my repetitiveness. Uh, I'd like to truly, from my heart, thank you, uh, thank my pastors. Uh, my wife and I, our pastors, uh, Walker and Haley Shears from the Miracle Life Family Church. Our church body was very gracious and, and they reached out to our family and I'm, I'm so grateful uh, to the church for that. I thank my new lawyers, J and M Associates. And these guys are amazing. They worked tirelessly to sort of get me out of the predicament that I was in. I thank my, my amazing cousin Mike, Mike Mumba, who I think is a magician magician you know he has to be a magician because some of the things he pulls I tell you unbelievable so I want to say thank you to my cousin Mike who's always been there for us and for me and I love him dearly and uh, I want to thank my 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 wife and my children and they've just been so gracious and so loving and so protective and I, I will for, forever be grateful for that alrighty so guys now as you know uh, this case is an ongoing case so I can't really talk too much about that the only thing I can say though is that no right person in their right mind goes around slashing tires with a knife okay just know that it, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever <laughs> all right so um, I have to tell you the day that I went to court the last day of court because many of you know I was in court for three months over this case and I've been going to court you know I didn't hire a lawyer because I thought this was an open shut case it was I thought in my mind it was a simple case well it turns out it wasn't so simple because on the 9th of January which was judgment day I woke up that morning and for those of you that are my TikTok participants you remember that day I woke up as I usually do I do my live TikToks and I was going to the courthouse to 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 to, to hear the judgment to hear the verdict and I was standing in the dock and and as you know when judges finally draw their conclusion when they come to a verdict they literally go through the whole case once again so you know you're sitting there for a good five minutes ten minutes depending on the length and the gravity of your case and you're sitting there and you're, you're listening to the judge he's talking giving points and the whole time I'm thinking well the judge is going to be done here in about maybe 15 20 minutes and then we're we can go home well it got to the part where the judge now seemed to hint that this was not going to go my way and I'm sitting there thinking wait a minute this doesn't sound good I mean the direction that he's the narrative that he's going through doesn't sound like this is in my favor finally the judge says therefore I find you guilty and I'm standing there thinking what guilty I kid you not I felt lightheaded my knees started to buckle because I'm standing there facing the judge and then he says I find you guilty and then he says to me is there anything you'd like to say in litigation sorry in, in mitigation mitigation not litigation is there anything that you would like to say in mitigation now I know what mitigation means but in that moment 
I totally forgot what it meant. I turned to the judge and I said, Judge, what the heck does mitigation mean? So he turns to me, you know, and this is Judge Fine uh, Mayambo. Uh, you know, he's a judge over there at the magistrate's court. A very serious judge. He looked at me and he said, Mr. Moya, mitigation means, is there anything that you'd like to say that will help me make a decision about how to met out the punishment that I have in mind for you? I didn't know what to say. I went completely blank. The only thing I could think of was what I read in the paper. When people say things like, no, this is my first offense. I have a family. So I said that. I just, I blurted that out. I just said, well, this is my first offense and I have a family. The judge looked at me and said, Mr. Moyawa, is that all? Is that it? I said, yes, sir, that's it. He says, okay. So he writes, you know. Then he says, uh, all right. I sentence you. This this crime that you've committed, Mr. Mwewa, carries a maximum sentence of two years. I'm going to do you a favor. I'm going to give you six months, Mr. Mwewa. Starting today, you can appeal if you want. Bang! Next case, I'm sitting, I'm standing there and I'm thinking, six months? Judge, <laughs> I got a meeting at 12.30. What are you talking about six months? I, 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 I literally, I kid you not, I know it sounds ridiculous, but that's exactly what went through my mind. I almost raised my hand, I said, Judge, I... I, I can't be here for six months. I, I got meetings. I got I got things to do. So you know the 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 mar not the marshal the bailiff. You know the the cop in there. He he sort of and the court marshal they they signal to me to sit down. So I'm sitting down. I'm with my phone, completely blindsided. It's one of these things that you, I'm sitting there thinking, am I dreaming this? Am I in a dream? Is this an alternative universe? Please, if this is a nightmare, I want to pinch myself. I need to wake up because I can't be here. It was real. It was real and it didn't matter what I did. It didn't matter how much I pinched myself. I was still sitting in that dock. After a few minutes, the, the police officer, you know, the, the, first of all, the judge sort of rises, the court rises and the judge leaves. And I'm sitting there thinking, well, what's going to happen next? The police officer comes over to me and says, okay, Mr. Meyer, let's go. So, you know, as, as it is, you know, when you stand up, you, you go down this little tunnel. There's a little tunnel underneath the magistrate's property. It's a long tunnel. I mean, you get to the bottom and you look at this long tunnel. It's so long, it looked endless. And the whole time I'm walking through this tunnel, I'm thinking, what the heck am I doing here? So I turned to the police officer. I said, what's, what's going on? What, where are we going? The guy looks at me and says, Mr. Moira, you're going to prison. Prison? He says, just follow me, you know. So I follow him. We go up to a, a, a spot where I have to give up my bags and my property and stuff. And, and then the police officer says, okay, uh, we're going to transport you to either Chimbokaila or Kamwala Remand. I said, Chimbokaila. Kamwala remand. He says, yeah, you, you're going to have to wait in the cell there. So I'm, I, they put me in a cell with, I don't know, 200 juveniles. I mean, these are kids that, that just don't, seems to me like they don't care about life. They don't care about tomorrow. They don't care about anything. They put me in this cell with about 200 kids. And they start, these kids, you know, they, they walk up to me and they say, So, Mr. Moyo, whatever happens here, I said, it's not remind, it's remand. He says, whatever, Mr. Moyo, whether you remind or remind, you just tell these officers to take you to Kamwala remind. 
kuchimboga ila simu za gona so you know I get scared I ask the officer I said where are you taking me he says well we'll, we'll, we'll tell you where you're going and then another guy comes up to me and says no Mr. Mwewa don't go to Kamwara Kukamwara kuria they are full of juveniles Muzapeza vima junkies Furu furu Edo barama echeta ba kwa tana mchinshi So ama officers mwewe fiati Mulombe Kuti buwana ina muntu wale ku Kuchimbo kaida So I got confused I said well, what do I say Where am I going One guy says to me go to Chimbo Gaila Another guy says to me go, go to remand So I walk over to the police officer I said oh, officer What gives Where am I going to go He says Mr. Mwewa we will take you where the system takes you Just sit tight You're going to be fine Everything's going to be alright So I'm sitting in the cell Finally the time comes For us to be transported from the magistrate's court to the prison system. Now, at this stage, I don't know where I'm going. Okay? So they, they, there's this vehicle. It's a box. It's called the Casalanga. Is it Casalanga? It's a, it's a, it's a vehicle that transports prisoners. The most inhumane, the most draconian, the most barbaric, the most dastardly damnable machine I've ever come across in my entire life this vehicle that is supposed to transport in it's got two compartments okay two compartments each compartment can hold comfortably about maybe 10 12 people Oh no, not the Zambian prison system, honey. Zambian pris prison system wakes up and says, no man, I know there's supposed to be 12 people in there, but stuff about 15, sorry, stuff about 30 people in there. They stuffed us in there. Thirty people in a little tiny space that's supposed to only hold comfortably 10 people I'm in there with with these juveniles and ventilation is is almost non-existent okay it's a little tiny window okay and then there are two little vents in the ceiling of the vehicle it was so hot I could hardly breathe I'm sitting by the window and these kids they seem to be completely oblivious I mean these juveniles were it was like they're going on a picnic you know they're talking and chatting and laughing and their body heat body heat that was emanating from everybody's because we were cramped up in such a small tiny space their body I could literally feel the body heat and I'm sticking my nose through the little vent and I'm thinking I'm gonna die this is it I'm gonna die right here right now they're gonna find me completely dead because I could hardly breathe now at this point two of the juveniles did something that I just couldn't believe they start lighting cigarettes I looked at those kids and I said those kids looked at me one of the kids looked at me and said I said Simoson's got nothing to do with it it has everything to do with the fact that we are in tight quarters it makes absolutely no sense for you to light up a cigarette in this environment okay it doesn't make any sense no I'm well to Africa manja manja you know, we're going to get to our destination soon enough. And the whole time I'm praying, I'm, I'm saying, God, please don't let me go this way. Okay, if I'm going to go, I can't go like this. I mean, I could hardly breathe. So finally, 
finally the kasalanga they, they, they rev it up you know they fire it up and it starts to move and as it moves you know a little breeze comes through there so you have a little relief and I'm thinking oh so we, we the first stop because you know the magistrates court is directly opposite Chimbokaila prison so there's that little tiny drive to Chimbokaila so the very first stop was Chimbokaila and I'm thinking to myself I don't care how bad Chimbokaila is as long as I can get off of this vehicle right here right now it wasn't to me the Casalanga parks we're sitting in there for four or five minutes the whole time I'm thinking any moment now the door is going to swing wide open a gust of cool air is gonna is gonna rush in I'm gonna get a nice deep breath of cool air it'll fill my lungs and it'll, it'll give me some form of sanity are you kidding me and we sat there for at least six minutes the door didn't swing open I can hear people in the next compartment disembarking get getting off of this vehicle Find the door closes from the other compartment and then the Casalanga starts off again so I'm thinking they're taking me and I'm thinking the ride from Chimbokaila to Kamwala it might as well might as well have been a hundred miles because it was so hot I'm sitting there thinking let's just get there let's just get there finally you know we start off and we start driving through the air you know is hitting the the, the little the little window for for the briefest of moments it felt like we were driving for 20 kilometers it was it felt so long so finally we get to the remand Kamwala remand and finally they 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 crack open the door and I was so relieved to just get a breath of fresh air I came out of that box and I looked at that vehicle and I said this is atrocious this is unacceptable human beings should not be transported in a vehicle in a contraption like the Casalanga if you have any type of ailment if you have any type of respiratory uh, a challenge it's very easy for you to die in that and nobody will know they'll only know after you get to the destination you know so we finally disembark I get out of that thing you know and then they usher us into to Kamwala remand there and and um, and you know they take our names we do all the formalities and again I'm still with these juveniles so finally they say to me they assign a cell to me cell three in the compound of of the the um, remand Kamala remand I get into the cell a cell that ideally is supposed to house oh I would say comfortably 25 30 people honey there were more than 70 people in there easy 70 60 70 people in there packed to capacity everybody sleeps on the floor and but what I must say I must point out everybody in there was very respectful all these kids were you know they'll greet me and they'll say they'll call me sir why not please come through here uh, take a seat here and then they assigned me a little tiny corner on the floor to sleep you know because as you know the quarters in there are very cramped it's like a bunch of animals I kid you not I mean it was like cattle in there literally stacked next to one another and the first night's the toughest no doubt about it I mean they march you in there you don't even know if you're gonna sleep that I didn't sleep that night the whole night I was awake the toilet is you know a few steps away from where I was sleeping so everything that was going on in there I was experiencing here it was the most humiliating uh, thing I'd ever gone through so anyway um, you know the the, the 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 time drew out like a blade you know that phrase time drew out like a blade it means it was just an hour felt like five hours a minute felt like an hour finally the sun comes up and uh, they let you out at about six or something six in the morning so they let us out and um, 
One of the officers was kind enough to say, well, Mr. Mwewa, you don't have to sleep in that, that one. We've got another cell that has fewer inmates, and I think you'd be more comfortable there because the inmates in this other cell are more mature, and, and, uh, and I think you'd be fine there. So they moved me to this cell where I had a bed to myself, and I met these other guys in there, you know, really, I met a Nigerian guy in there, other people in there, and they all were very kind and welcoming to me. And because I didn't sleep the night before, when I finally was given a, a bed space of my own, I decided, you know what, I'm going to sleep because I'm tired and my mind is racing. The moment I laid my head down, an officer comes to me and says, Mr. Mwewa, you are going to Mwembish. Get your things. Let's go. The first thing that hit my mind was, I know how far Mwembeshi is. Because I remember when Dr. Neversmumba was incarcerated, I went to see him there uh, in, in Mwembeshi. It's quite a drive. It's about 35, 36 kilometers from, from town. The only thing I was thinking of was, what, they're going to stuff me back in that Kasalanga? And we're going to drive for 35 kilometers from here? This is crazy. The guy says, no, no, you're not going to go in that thing. There's another vehicle that you're going to use. So I get in the vehicle. They drive me to this amazing prison called Mwembeshi Prison. Brand new facility. I get there. I couldn't believe it. It was, it was like one of these, it was like in the movies. You know, everything was new. Everything was brand new. So when I get there, the officer in charge um, calls me to his office. And he starts to tell me. He says, Mr. Mwewa, where you have come here, uh, you are, you're, this is just a station. You must understand. Mr. Mwewa, life is made up of uh, twists and turns. Other people have a straight path before they reach their destination. Others their path winds and caves, ups and downs. But nonetheless, we all have stations. And what you must understand, Mr. Mwewa, is that this is a station. It's not your destination. But you yourself have to decide what lesson you are going to learn whilst you are here. This place will be a benefit to you, and, the, and the you will be a benefit to this place. So just uh, let not your heart be troubled, Mr. Moyo. Just yield yourself to the process. And Mr. Moyo, always remember that when we judge harshly, don't worry about what people are saying out there. Because those same people who are judging harshly, when you judge harshly, we become hypocrites. So don't be counted amongst those who pay attention to what people are saying. You, Mr. Mwewa, just walk your path. That is all. And lastly, Mr. Mwewa, let me tell you, our relationship, this institution and you, this is a symbiotic relationship he turns to me and says, Mr. Mwewa, do you know what the word symbiotic means? I said, yes, sir. What does it mean? It means both parties benefit from the relationship. He says, correct. This institution will benefit from you and you equally will benefit from this institution. So take heart. And by the way, Mr. Moyer, as you go, make sure you refer to everybody as Zibwana Mkubwa. Here we don't say yes, sir. We don't say yes, madam. It's Bwana Mkubwa. And when you meet the officers, these guards there, make sure your hands are behind, your, are behind you here when you are talking to them. We don't want any sudden movements. <laughs> you understand that, Mr. Moyer? <laughs> so yes, sir. You can go to your cell. So I get to the cell, you know, and, and it's a nice dormitory, bed, you know, to myself. And, but the only thing I noticed 
Uh, there are many things, but the only thing I notice that is of, of grave concern is our country is flooded with PIs, prohibited immigrants. You know, we have so many Ethiopians and so many people from Rwanda, so many people from Burundi that are in this country illegally. And I didn't realize that there... Do you know why? I have to share this with you because this was a revelation to me. It might be a revelation to some of you. But do you know why we have a huge influx of Ethiopians? I had a lot of Ethiopians in my really nice kids. I mean, these are kids. They're, you know, 23, 24, 25. No older than 25. All young men. Vibrant young men full of testosterone and, and an outlook on life. These kids, I didn't realize that the Ethiopians that are coming from Ethiopia through Zambia, down through Zimbabwe, and ultimately landing in South Africa. When I say land, I don't mean by plane. They, they, they stuff them in tankers. You know the fuel tankers? Remember a while ago there was a story of uh, uh, a group of, I think there were 29 Ethiopians that were found dead buried somewhere. Well, those those people come from Ethiopia and they're they're oftentimes they're transported in the most inhumane conditions that you could ever think of. I mean, imagine being stuffed in a fuel tanker for for a couple of days. It, it, it's 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 unthinkable. Well, they when they transport them from Ethiopia through Zambia, Zimbabwe, and then ultimately into South Africa. Do you know why they're doing that? They're going to South Africa to sell kidneys, to sell their organs. Can you believe that? Can you imagine? That is the hustle that's there. So anytime you hear that Ethiopians or people from Burundi are coming in, stuffed in these tankers. That's the hustle. The hustle is they're going to South Africa to sell their kidneys. It's a big business. It's illegal. You know, so, and, and I found that to be quite disheartening. All right. Well, hey guys, thank you so much for watching. And once again, thank you for your prayers. I know some of you thought that I, uh, <laughs> some of you thought that I went to prison because of what I said about TDJ, TD, jo T, what's his name? TB Joshua. I didn't. I didn't go there because of TB Joshua. TB Joshua doesn't have power to do anything. Okay? Nothing can happen from the grave, much less when he was alive. But I wanted to give you a, a couple of books. This. This book is written by a dear friend of mine, and I took this in prison, and I finally finished it. It's called "You're Worth the Fight." I'm going to give, I'm going to share this book with three of you. I'll just randomly pick you, and I'll send this over to you. "You're Worth the Fight." This, the Word of God, and a book called "Blood Brothers: The Relationship Between the Friendship Between Muhammad Ali." and uh, the great revolutionary Malcolm X. Alrighty. Thanks for listening. God bless you. Peace. Alright, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.